Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for moving in our midst. We recognize you, Holy Spirit. We recognize you, Holy Spirit, as the pinnacle of this service, Holy Spirit. We recognize your sovereignty, Holy Spirit, over this church, Life Church, Fiji. We recognize your, your Holy Spirit over this nation of Fiji. Do what you need to do, Holy Spirit, over your people, Holy Spirit. We give you total approval, Holy Spirit. We give you total authority. Move. Do what you need to do, Holy Spirit, over your people. Speak to us, Holy Spirit. Reposition us, Holy Spirit. Rebuke us, Holy Spirit. Realign us, Holy Spirit. Speak to us, Holy Spirit. Be our mouthpiece this morning, Holy Spirit. We give you back the glory. We give you back the honor. We give you back the praises. We give you back the exaltation. We give you back everything because it belongs to you, God. We give it all back to you, Jesus. And we thank you, Jesus, for this morning. Do what you have to do, Holy Spirit. Do what you have to do, Holy Spirit. Do what you have to do, Holy Spirit. We come in agreement, Holy Spirit. We come in unison, Holy Spirit. And we give you total approval, Holy Spirit, to do whatever that needs to be done here, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Yes, yes. Let us pray. Father, we ask that you speak to us briefly this morning. Change us, O oh God. Transform us. Send a word to us that will, cause, that will cause a revolution in our life. Transform us, O oh God. As we depart from here, may our life not remain the same way we came in. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray and everybody shout amen. amen. All right. Thank you so much. I want to appreciate our pastor. Thank you. Um, our acting senior pastor and all the pastors in the house for this opportunity to bring God's word this morning. I don't take it for granted, and uh, I really appreciate God for that. So this morning, I just want to share with us very briefly, you know, we, this season of our fasting and prayer, I hope you are doing good. Amen. Amen. Hey, are you fasting at all? <laughs> because the way you are looking, it doesn't look as if you are fasting. You are looking very robust and uh, your cheeks are shining. When you are fasting, you should be looking like me, you know. <laughs> Praise God. All right, so we've been talking about the subject of overcoming our giants. And today, I I'm going to be talking about uh, overcoming our giant through divine instruction. When they gave me this, it feels like I'm in a lecture room, you know, that I'm always used to. Can I just drop this, please, so that I can feel like I'm preaching, eh? <laughs> Praise God. Just help me. You push them. It's not, there are not many. There are not many. There are not many slides there, and uh, I'll be out of your face very soon. All right, so I, I'm going to be talking about overcoming your giant through prophetic instruction. Overcoming your giant through prophetic instruction. See, these are very great, these are very important and significant moments that we are in. The beginning of a thing is very significant. 
So the beginning of this year is more important as far as I'm concerned than the rest of the month. What you are able to accomplish at this beginning of this year will help you scale through the whole year. That is why the fasting and prayer that the church has called on upon is very important. I've called you into is very important. So I will encourage each and every one of you, encourage your family, your children, and everyone in your household to be a part and parcel of the fasting and prayer. Amen. amen. I said amen. amen. All right. So it is important for us to take note of some of these prophetic instructions that I, I, by the Spirit of God, will be relaying to us today. Just five of them. Just five of them. Not many. Five of them. Just five of them. Now, instruction. Instruction. See, sometimes when we hear the word instruction, our mind shifts to, you know, detectorship. You know, we, it shifts as if we are in a military era. You know, and sometimes our heart begins to rebel against it. You know, so in instruction is God gives instruction. God does not negotiate with anyone. God is not democratic. God gives instruction to his children. So you either obey it or you are disobeying it. You cannot negotiate the word of God, God's instruction. Are you get what I'm saying? So God is an instructor. God is not a teacher. You can argue with your teacher. You can debate with your lecturer, but you cannot debate with your instructor. And, you know, so, you know, Life Church is so blessed with a lot of you working in uh, the aviation industry. So we have captains here who fly planes. You know, we have uh, people who work in, in that sector. Some of them are retired now. Some of them are no longer there. But you understand how that works. And you can, you will bear me witness that the people, when you go to your flying school, you don't call those guys lecturers. Right? You don't call them lecturers. You don't even call them teachers. Have you ever thought of it? Have you ever wondered why they call them instructors? Because you don't negotiate with them. The instruction they give to you is a, is a matter of life and death. Do you understand what I'm saying? You don't negotiate. You cannot afford to negotiate with your instructor. When your, when your instructor in your flying school asks you to pull that thing, I don't know what the name is, pull it to be able to land your plane. You know that thing they pull? Pull it to be able to land your plane. You have to pull it. You cannot ask him, hey, let me just let it, let me just let it be. You will crash and we will see you in heaven. Are you getting what I'm saying? <laughs> you cannot negotiate with your instructors. You obey your instructors. So the, the, the instructions of God are not to be negotiated with. You can't negotiate with God. God is, not, God is too big to sit down with you on a negotiation table. God is not an arbitrator who will negotiate with you and say, okay, this year you do it this way. And you say, no, God, I don't want to do it that way. I know I want to do it this way. And God says, okay, let us just meet at the middle. No, no, no. God does not negotiate with his children. He gives instruction and we are bound to obey those instructions. Praise the name of the Lord. So I'm going to be helping us by the Spirit of God to, you know, just lay, just lay, just lay those kind of those instructions about five of them, and uh, let's see what God help us through uh, today. All right. So like like we said, it's a new it's a new it's a new year, 2023. I know it's a new dawn. It's a new opportunity new beginning and uh, new graces for a fresh start for those of us who have had a bad year last year this is another year for us to start again forget about the past because god is about to do a new thing amen, amen. all right you see in isaiah chapter 43 isaiah chapter 43 verse 18 to 19 if you read it from the message bible it says forget about what has happened or what's happened don't keep going over old history. A lot of us, a lot of us have diaries where we have documented a lot of things that have happened to us, especially the negative ones. You know? Especially women are very good at recounting the things that have happened to them in the I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. The way Pastor Kate look at me, I'm sorry. You know? No, I'm not trying to be gender, whatever. I'm just sorry. You know, no, some people have a way of recounting the negative stuff that have happened to them. They can tell you the day, the time, the moment. In fact, the, the color of dress you were wearing. Good to see you. How are you? Amen. So they can tell you what you were wearing. They can even tell you the way you were positioned yourself when you said that thing that was bad to them. 
They can give you the details of everything that has happened negatively. But the Bible is saying to us, this year, 2023, forget about what has happened in the past. Yes, he broke your heart. Forget about what has happened in the past. He disappointed you. Forget about what has happened to you in the past. You could not get that job you applied for. Forget about what has happened in the past. No, you were not promoted in your office. Forget about what has happened in the past. Because God is about to do something new in your life. Amen. He said, be alert. Be present. Live in the present. This year, 2023, stop talking about what has happened in the past. Stop talking about 2022. 2022 is gone. It can never come back again. No matter how long you fast, even if you life fast for 50 days, 2022 can never come back. It is gone. What your husband had done for you that had done to you that was wrong, 2022 is past. It can never come back. What your wife has done to you or done for you that is negative has passed. It will never come back. I am about to do something brand new. Everybody say brand new. Brand new. God is prophetically speaking to us today. Life church, God is saying he is about to do something brand new. You know, last year we went through a lot. You know, we had some victories last year, testimonies last year, and we had major, you know, shaking last year too. But God is saying to us, Life Church, hey, listen to me. Hey, boys, girls, women, men, listen to me. God is saying to us, he's about to do for you something brand new. In my, in my country, we call it tear rubber, you know? You know, when you buy a car, you know, there are cars and there, are, there is what we refer to as motto. And there's what we refer to as cars, right? Now, the cars, tear rubber kind of cars are those ones you buy brand new. that You have to tear the, you know, the label and all that around it. So tear rubber, that is the kind of the miracle God is about to do for us this year. Brand new. He said, it is busted out. It is going to burst out. Going to burst out. It is not just going to manifest, but it will burst out. Say, don't you see it? There it is. I'm making a road through the desert. Rivers in the bad land. Desert, dry lands. You know, God, God is saying to us, he's going to make a road through the desert. So every desert area of your life, God said he's going to make a road through it in the name of Jesus. I said in the name of Jesus. All right, I want us to note that instructions, the next slide, I want us to note that instructions are the highways of life. Every eye flyer in life attain greatness via the instrumentality of adhering strictly to instruction. You can't go far in life if you don't obey instructions. Any captain who decides to not to obey the instruction of the of the instructor will be will be crashing every other week. So instructions are key to life. If you want to be successful this year, you must adhere to the instructions of the Lord. So instructions are important. Instructions are important. So instruction number one, prof five prophetic instructions. Instruction number one is one is an undivided commitment to the ministry of the word and prayer. Acts chapter six verse four. Acts chapter six verse four. Acts chapter six and verse four. You have it there. Can you sh show scriptures? Acts chapter six. And verse 4. Acts chapter 6 and verse 4. Anybody with Acts chapter 6 verse 4? Just read for me. Acts chapter 6 verse 4. Acts chapter 6 and verse 4. Mm. All right. But we will give ourselves continually to prayers and to the ministry of the word. These two things are important if we must make success of our 2023. The ministry of the word and the ministry of prayer. If we must make success of this year, if our 2023 must end up with a testimony, we must continually, we must, you know, we must give you know, undivided commitment, dedication to the ministry of the word 
and the ministry of prayer. Undivided attention to the, to the place of the word, the word, the word of God. We must take our time to study the word. In 2nd in second Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, 15, 15 and 16, it talks about study. Study to show yourself approved. A workman that needed not to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. Study. See, studying is deeper than just reading. So there is a call, there's an instruction of God for us to get back to the place of the studying of God's word. Spending quality time on the word of God. Brooding over the word until the word of God begins to manifest from your inside. That when you are confronted with storms and situation of life, because there are going to be storms, there are going to be challenges this year. That you come to a point where there are challenges in your family, the word of God just automatically leaped out of you. Because you have brood. You know what I mean by brooding? Have you seen a chicken laying eggs and brooding on those eggs? All right? You brood, you camp, you tabernacle on the word until the word becomes part and parcel of you. The word of God is not, this is not, the word of God is not meant to be memorized. The word of God is not just for mental ascent. The word of God is just not to cram and read them in Sunday school. The word of God ought to be, you ought to come to a point in your life where the word of God becomes intermingled with everything about you. That as you speak, God's word comes out of you. That when you are face to face with challenges, the word of God. See, listen to me. When there are challenges, challenges in life are not meant to kill any believer. Challenges come to us as believers to test the quality of God's word on your inside. Now, if you want to give credence to your spiritual work with God this year, you must spend time on the word. And not just spending time on the word, you must also spend quality time in the place of prayer. See, life is more than physical. Life is spiritual. And only spiritual men can survive in this kind of a life that is spiritual. And one of the ways to tap into the realm of the spirit is through the place of, in the place of prayer. Prayer. And, and, and you know, let me tell you, the best way to pray is by praying. Huh? The best way to... You want to start praying? You want to know how to pray? Just start praying. You, nobody start praying. Nobody, nobody is born a prayer warrior. No one is born a prayer, a prayer giant. People learn to pray. This year, one of the things, one of the resolve you must make, one of the, one of the covenant you must make with God as we fast and pray is to come to a place where you are a praying machine. Men in the house, you must come to a point in your life where you, begin, you pray, you pray more. We can't afford to allow the, our wives being, you know, to be the prayer, prayer, prayer people in the house and we are just snoring and sleeping and reading all the newspaper and talking about politics. Okay, now elections are over. Back to business. Amen. <laughs> Amen. It is a call to serious prayer. You see, God answered our prayer. The election went well. Amen. Some people ran away. We are still here and God has done it. Amen. Prayer. God is calling his children to the place of prayer. We must spend quality time. That, that, what that means is that we must do everything within our power to avoid distraction this year. And one of the biggest challenge, one of the biggest distractions for children of God is social media. I hope we know that, especially in Fiji, right? Like I said the other time, social media, Facebook. A lot of persons are working, employed by social media, Unfortunately, uh, employed by Facebook. Unfortunately, Facebook is not paying them. They are rather the one paying Facebook, you know? Spending your money in data, you know, everything you do, you put on Facebook. I, I, I said the other time jokingly that sometimes if you want to write the biography of some people, you don't need to talk to them, you don't need to interview them. Just go to their Facebook page. You can just write everything about them. Because whatever they are eating, New Year, 
dinner, they put it on Facebook, everything on Facebook. This year, you must make up your mind to avoid distraction so that you can spend time to pray. Nobody spend their time on Facebook and other social media and that will have enough time to spend quality time in the place of prayer. If you want God to walk in your life, you want the presence of God to tabernacle in your household, your house must become a place of prayer, a house of prayer. The presence of God can invade your, can invade your house. The presence of God can invade your office where you work. Not by discussing politics, discussing about Bani Marama and uh, Grambuka. No, no, no. But by praying. Praying. That when men enter, step into your office, they can literally feel the presence of God. This year, one of the commitments we must make is to commit ourselves to the place of prayer. To be able to carry God's presence. If, I, if we must make a difference in our life this year, we must come to the place of prayer. Praise God. I said praise God. I said praise God. Now, for young people that are here, now listen to me, you are not too young to start praying. In fact, the best time to start learning to start learning how to pray is when you are young. Because for us that are old, I have three children. He has, um, I think, grandchildren. On the, okay, only three also. Plus all that. Because all these persons are your children. Amen. All of us are your children. <laughs> you know, we all have children, grandchildren, and so on and so forth. Now, most, most time, we don't have time. In fact, even when you want to pray, you see a, a little kid walking up to you and disturbing. I remember of recently my wife wanted to pray and the little girl would keep banging the door. Hey, mommy, what are you doing? You know, and all that. Now that you are young, single, free, and free, what you need to do is to begin to cultivate the prayer, your a prayer life. Spend quality time in praying. Spend quality time in praying. Pray about everything about your life. Pray about your future. Pray about your academics. Pray about where, where you will work. Pray about everything. Now that you are single, some of you are not even married. Pray now, pray now, pray now, pray now. Pray now so that you don't become a prey for, to the devil. Are you following what I'm saying? This is the time to pray. This is the time to pray. Praying and fasting period is not a time to just, it's not hunger strike. Neither are we trying to conserve food for the rest of the year. It's not because, you know, food is, not, food is never in short, in short supply in Fiji. That is not what we are doing in, 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 in Life Church. But we are trying to develop our spiritual muscles, our spiritual stamina. We are trying to build capacity in the world and in the place of prayer throughout this year. Months, so that by the time we emerge in February, we are giant in this in the faith. Hallelujah! Amen. We'll be ready to confront anything that confronts us. From February upward, we'll be overcoming every giant that comes our way. Why? Because we have developed capacity in the world and also developed capacity in the place of prayer. Praise God! Amen. So I encourage all of you. This is the time to pray. It doesn't matter whether your father is here or your mother is here. For those of you who have your parents as believers and they are here, praise God for your life. But see, develop your own personal time with God. See, this Christian work is a personal race. I hope you know that. It's an individualistic race. It's an individual race. You need to work on your own. As a young girl, as a young man seated there and your dad is here, your dad will have to pray for himself, develop his prayer life. Your mom will have to develop her prayer life. You will also have to develop your own prayer life. If things must happen for you this year, if you must have testimony at the end of this year, you must develop your prayer capacity. Come on, somebody shout amen. amen. You must develop your prayer capacity. You must build a prayer capacity. You must develop your prayer stamina. You must come to a point in your life that your words in the realm of the spirit is so authoritative that when there are challenges, you, all you need to do is to arise from wherever you are and command and speak a word and the heavens will back your word up. That can only happen when you have built up a capacity in the place of prayer. Are you following what I'm saying? Amen. So we must learn to pray. There is a call to pray. There is a call to pray. 
there is a call upon us as church, life church, to pray. Then the next thing, the next thing we need to do, the next thing we need, the next instruction, the next instruction is, the next instruction is that we must invest. You must invest in your health. That doesn't sound like spiritual instruction, but it's very important. Invest in your health and your well-being, especially with regards to rest. See, no matter how gigantic, no matter how big your vision is, you will need a very healthy body to be able to carry that vision. I have seen many persons who, whom God has given very beautiful vision to, but died be, before their time because they did not take care of their health. So we must take care of our health. And that means we must eat right. Some of you might need to not see a pastor, but go see a, a, a dietitian to plan your meal. Some of you may have to leave, um, 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 what do you call this, Lovo and Polisami alone this year, so that you can keep your body in, a, in the right shape to be able to carry the vision that God has given to you. Somebody call it Bible sense for healthy living. This year, we must, now, if you read Genesis chapter 2 from verse 2 to 4, it talks about after God has created everything on the seventh day, God rested. The almighty God, the omnipotent God, right? Omniscient God, the one that has all power. After he has worked for seven days consecutively, he rested. So if the almighty can rest, you, us that are the all all lowly, you know, we need to rest. Some of us, we just walk and walk and walk and walk and walk. We walk in the office. Then you come back and you bring your work from the office to the house, from the house back to the office. You do it, you know, every day. You jump from Monday to Sunday. No break. You just jump around and everybody is clapping for you in your office. They are clapping for you to your grave. Try this year, this year, if we must do valiantly in the in the in the place of in, in God's in this kingdom, we must rest. We must take a rest. We must watch closely our health. We must go for medical checkups. Now, if you read, if you read Mark chapter 4, verse 37 and 38, it talks about the story about Jesus sleeping while there was a storm. The disciples were trying to go to the other side and there arose a big storm and Jesus was sleeping. And they tried by all means to come and it was not working. And they, walk, they went and woke up Jesus. Say, Jesus, carry down not that we perish. Jesus, the, Jesus, Jesus, the Savior of the world. Remember, Jesus, the Savior of the world, was sleeping while the storm was raging. So if Jesus could sleep, you try and sleep this year. Are you getting what I'm saying? You know, some of us, even while we are sleeping, we are also working. While we are sleeping, we are still mapping, we are still mapping the job for the next day. So we wake up so tired because we walk all through while we are sleeping. I pray for you today that your sleep will be sweet in the name of Jesus. You need to sleep. You need to rest. You need to eat well. When you are not fasting, eat well. Stop eating junks. Stop eating junk. Stop spending breakfast. Stop spending your money in uh, kick, uh, Burger King. I'm sorry, Burger King. Stop sp spending your money uh, breakfast Burger King, uh, lunch Burger King, uh, dinner Burger King. You will die very soon, <laughs> and God will replace you. Are you get what I'm saying? See, see, there is now. Now listen to me. Uh, sorry, I'm sorry if I am talking like an African man. I'm sorry. Now, now there is there is an age. There's an age you get to that you cannot just afford to eat everything. For some of us who have crossed like 40, 50, and so on, you cannot afford to eat everything. We have to reduce sugar. We have to reduce all those fruit juice, all those um, um, coke, 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 coke. Amen. Hey, God help me in Jesus' name. My children are praying for me. I, I told my children that when I get to 50, I will stop drinking coke. But, uh, but honestly, it's a battle. Amen. <laughs> Amen. 
Amen. Some of us are shareholders in Coca-Cola but in company. You know? May God help us. We need, to, we need to watch what goes into our mouth. Because it is not every sweet thing that gets into your mouth that is good for us. Some of us will need to seek medical you know, advice. You see, how can you watch your family? Your father died of diabetes. Your grandfather died of diabetes. Your uncle died of diabetes. Your auntie died of diabetes. Don't you see that diabetes is hovering around your corner? That wisdom should teach you, wisdom should inform you that there are some things you should not eat so that diabetes doesn't catch up with you. You don't need a prophet to prophesy to you, oh, in the name of Jesus, be careful of diabetes. No, diabetes is within your neighborhood. So you need to be careful. Some of us, we eat and eat and eat, sleep, wake up, continue eating. May God help us in Jesus' name. We need, we need, we need to, to watch our health. The reason why I'm saying this is because, see, I have seen men and women, I've seen people, beautiful vision God has given to them. But they are not strong physically to be able to carry that assignment God has given to them. Can you imagine a church like this? You, if, if something is wrong with our pastor, you cannot carry out this vision that God has given to you. You need to be mentally strong, physically strong to be able to carry God's vision for your life. See, especially when, if you are a woman, you need to watch your health. I have also seen most women, when it is time for them to begin to enjoy the fruit of their labor, they, 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 they are knocked down by one sickness because they have refused to take care of their health. You must be careful of what you eat. We must be careful of what we eat. Some of, some of us, we need to just close our mouth, zip our mouth, and, uh, and praise God why there's, uh, those sweets are going around in, the, in, in, in our office. Or you excuse yourself into the toilet and allow them to finish. So, you know, you know, no, there's, there is a culture. I think, I'm, I think I am in the right place to say this because I'm not from here. You know, I can say this. You know, there is a culture in Fiji where people cannot say no to anything. It is, it is culturally very rude to say no. So when somebody brings food, bring a plate to the office, something tells you, the spirit of God tells you, gives you a witness on your inside, don't eat. But because it is culturally wrong to say no, you just pick and eat. This year, receive the grace to say no in the name of Jesus. When you go for birthday, don't eat everything. Drink water and get out of the place. If you are tempted, don't even go. Amen. Amen. May God help us in Jesus' name. The reason why I'm saying this is because this year we must all finish very strong. None of us will be found in the hospital in the name of Jesus. The hospital bed will not accommodate anyone here in the name of Jesus Christ. So we must invest in our health. We must invest in our well-being. We must go for exercise. We must exercise ourselves. We must burn those calories. We must go to the gym, register, not, not go today, go next week, go next month. No, you must consistently go to the gym. You must consistently take part in that activity that you have registered for. Because at the beginning of the year, like that, people make long resolution. Oh, I will, I will go to uh, Brother Richard's uh, gym every week, every week. But after two weeks, you can't find them any longer. You must, you must make commitments to take care of your head. Because do you know what? Your children need you. Women, your children need you. Not just your children, because your children are even too close. Your grandchildren need you. And you know, the joy of having grandchildren, you know, you know I think it's what John Maswell has said, the blessedness of having grandchildren is, uh, is you not killing your children. When you refuse to kill your children, God bless you with grandchildren. And that is why grandparents are very good with grandchildren. They spoil them. There's always a battle between parents and children over grandchildren. So if you can you imagine when you are you are 50 but too weak to carry your grandchildren you are 60 and you cannot even carry your grandchildren 
You are just seated. Instead of being a blessing to your grandchildren, your grandchildren are now even tired of coming to visit you because you have become a burden to them. Because you can't move, you can't play, you can't jump, you can't do, you know, those kind of stuff that children love to do. May we not be a burden to our family in Jesus' name. Yes, I was not expecting that amen to be loud, you know. Amen. I said amen. amen. May God help us. So we must invest in our health. We must invest in our well-being. We must take our time to rest. We must invest in our health as a commitment to, because investing in our health is a commitment towards our longevity. We must try as much as possible to trust God, to invest in the things that matters to our health. Amen. Number three, invest in building and maintaining your relationships. In Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 9, it talks about that two are better than one. There is no great vision in life that can be accomplished alone. In fact, as a matter of fact, if your vision can be accomplished just by you alone, it means that that vision is too small. Only small visions are accomplished alone. Significant visions in life are accomplished with a team of people. You will always need relationships in your life. Relationships are so significant this year if we must make good success of this year. So we must consciously build and maintain the relationships that, that we have. Nobody, nobody succeeds in isolation. As a matter of fact, if the devil wants to cut you off, what he does first is to cut you away from your relationships. I'm talking about destiny relationship. Destiny fulfilling relationship. So God wants us to come into relationship with others because as we come into relationship with others, our faith is built. Our faith is, we are encouraged. Together we, 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 we are able to accomplish great, great things for God. So God wants us to nourish. God wants us to build. God wants us to maintain the relationship that he has given to us. We must begin to invest in our relationship this year. The relationship that God has placed around you, your family, your wife, your husband, your children, your grandchildren, your uncles, your, those, those, those destiny, destiny fulfilling relationships that God has placed around you. We must invest in those. And, and one of the ways to invest in relationship, one of the ways to invest in relationship is, through, is, by, is by being grateful to the people that God has put around us. Gratitude. Consciously being grateful. God has blessed us. Blessed us with a lot of persons around us who have contributed in one way or the other. So I need us to have that sense of gratitude for the people around our lives. Your pastor. When last did you ever send a note to our pastor to say thank you so much pastor for being my pastor all through this last throughout last year. Thank you for being my head of department. Thank you for leading us. Thank you for, thank you for being a father to me. Thank you for being a mother to me. You know, we live in time and, in time and season, like I said the other time, where people feel so entitled. Children feel so entitled to the things they get from their parents. So, ah, after all, you gave birth to me. Did I ask you to give birth to me? Was, was I there to negotiate my, my birth? No, 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 no. You were not there to negotiate your birth, but thank God that you were giving birth to so you need to appreciate your mom. You need to appreciate your dad. You need to appreciate your teachers. Appreciate the relationship that God has placed around you because you cannot succeed this year without those relationships. Praise God. I said praise God. So we need to nurture those relationships. We need to build those relationships. We need to honor the people that God has put in our lives. We need to, we need to respect the, the relationship that God has put in our life. Nobody makes it in isolation. Don't forget, no one makes it alone. You cannot succeed alone. Say, ah, you know, you know I, I, I don't need anybody. I don't need anybody. You, know, you need to hear the way some people talk. I don't need anyone. I don't need you. I don't need anybody. I can make it on my own. You cannot make it on your own. The only way you can make it on your own is what you are trying to do is too small. It cannot make any mark. 
if you want to do anything that will make a mark upon the sand of destiny, anything that will be significant, that will make a, that will put a, an indelible mark upon history, upon the mark of you know of life, you must come into partnership with people. If you are a student here and you want to be an outstanding student in your school, in your class, you must come into partnership with other students in your school. If you are a lecturer, you must also come into partnership with other lecturers in school. In fact, as a matter of fact, in, 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 in the world of academics today, when you write a paper, you, write, you publish a paper alone, it's not, a, it's not as weighty as when you come into collaboration with other people. Because we believe that two hairs are better, I mean two good hairs though, two good hairs are better than one. So we must consciously come into collaboration with other people this year. Praise the name of the Lord. Five, um, number four, number four, number four, number four, number four. Embark on a new year retreat, such as the one that we are currently doing. So if you are here, you are not joining us. You are just, uh, you know, because we don't take roll call of how many persons are fasting and praying. You know, we might not be able to know, but God's seeing you. And I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just, you know, encouraging you that if you have not joined, join. Embark on a new year. So what we are doing in Life Church is a retreat. We are fasting and we are praying. We are seeking the mind of God this year. We are hearing God. We are you know, studying the word of God. We are spending quality time to pray. We are spending quality time to hear what God is saying. You know, so we, you know, we push. You know, so a retreat. What is a retreat? A retreat is a push to a great spiritual fresh start. A push. A push to a great spiritual fresh start. And also know that this retreat can either be personal or, or, or corporate. Just like the one we are doing in church, this is a corporate retreat we are doing this month, these 21 days. And I think today is day eight already. Day eight, so we have a few more days to go. If you have not joined, please join us. We are in a retreat moment. We are in a retreat moment. It's a time that we, we, has, we, has, we have set this time apart to renew ourselves. To renew our Christian work with God, to seek God's direction, and also to seek fresh empowerment from God. Praise the name of the Lord. Like I said, this is not hunger strike. We are not embarking on hunger strike. We are not also trying to conserve food for the year. Rather, we are seeking direction for this year. We are seeking direction for this year. Now, what should, you, what should we do? What are the activities that, can, that should be carried out during a retreat? The next slide, please. What are the activities that should be carried out in a retreat? Number one, thanksgiving. As we pray all through these 21 days, thanksgiving, we must thank God. We must qualitatively thank God. Let quality thanks come from your heart. We must thank God for what God has done for us in the year past. God is faithful. He has done us well. Your retreat is not complete without thanksgiving. These 21 days of fasting and prayer will not be complete without your thanksgiving. Thanking God for what he has done for us in year 2020. Despite the challenges of year 2020, we are still here strong. We must give God thanks. We must give God thanks. What again do we do during retreat? Number two is direction. We seek God's direction. We are continuously seeking God's direction. God, what is the way for me? There is something God wants us to do as a church this year. So as we fast and pray these 21 days, we are asking God to give us clearer direction for this year. There is what God wants us to do. God does not want his children to just do anything. Our life should not be a trial and error kind of life. God should give us specific direction. And as you retreat, as you pray and fast these 21 days, God is going to be giving you vivid direction of what to do this year. God will tell you what to do, what kind of business to do, what kind of job to apply for, where to go to, where your profiting will manifest to all. God gives direction when we, re, when we go on retreat. Number three, an honest appraiser of the past year. An honest appraiser, an evaluation, 
as we pray and fast, it's a time for you to retreat and begin to evaluate what has happened, what has transpired in your life on those four or five categories, your spiritual life, your mental transformation, your spiritual life. How, how, much, how much of prayers were you able to pray last year? What is your prayer life like last year? What is your study life like last year? What is your evangelism like, uh, life like last year? What is your spiritual life? How, how is your life in the spirit last year? These are some of the things you need to ask yourself as you begin, as you retreat. You need, these 21 days, you need to ask yourself those questions. What was my spiritual life last year? What am I going to do this year to make my life more profitable spiritually? Number two, you also need to also evaluate your life, appraise your life based on mental transformation. Mental transformation. How many books did you read last year? How many books Apart from the Bible, how many books did you read last year? How many books? Those of you who are students, books, I'm not talking about books recommended for examination. I'm talking about books that will increase you, books that will make you a better person. How many books did you read last year? What kind of mental exercise did you give to yourself last year? You know, there are people who graduated from the university and from the day they graduated, they've never opened any book in their lifetime. In fact, I have discovered in my school, I've discovered students who only read to pass exam. They only open their books just to pass. Many persons do that. But this year, I challenge you to be able to, you know, transform yourself mentally by reading quality books. If you don't have a list of those books, you can meet Pastor K, you can meet our pastor, meet anyone here who, might, who can help you through. They'll give you a list of books to read that will help, you know, move your life, transform you mentally. Because the, the, depths, the depth of transformation that you've received mentally will determine the quality of life that you will live this year. How many books will you read this year? So the question is, how many books are you going to read this year? How many books will you read every month? How many books will you read every week? How many books will you read? Because the time you, we spend on our phone, I, you know, I, I discover, I discover, when, when I was a student, when I was a student, I, I discovered that I could be on Facebook three hours. Three hours. My eyes will never blink. I will never be tired. Three unbroken, committed, unbroken focus time on Facebook. And you know, Facebook, I came up, I, after that experience, I came up with this notion that there is a demon on Facebook. I, I just, because, see, when you're on Facebook, as you go, you know, you click the first one, you go, it keeps you, it just keeps you going. It just keeps you going. Before you know it, one hour, two hours is gone. Three hours is gone. Your eyes never blinking. Then I discovered the moment I dropped my Facebook after three hours, sometimes five hours, four hours, and I pick my other books to read. Five minutes, seven minutes, and I'll be battling with sleep. So you discover that most times the things that do not add to life and godliness you know, it takes so much from us that we may not have time for the things that pertains to life and godliness. How many of us, you know, come to the place of studying God's word and begin to sleep? You know, in my house, I, it happens, you know, for children. You see them jumping here and then jumping. Okay, let us do our devotion and let us pray. You see them, you think they are in the spirit. They are gone, sleeping. You know, they have to start binding and casting the devil. Amen. <laughs> you know? But when they're on tablet, when you're on tablet watching your cartoon, ooh, they are so very much alert. They are so alert and sensitive. They can pick. They will laugh. They will come show me, oh, that is here and all that. But when it comes to the things that pertains to life and godliness, the devil will begin to blow some sweet sleep into your eyes. It will not happen to you this year in Jesus' name. So you appraise your mental transformation, your health and well-being. You talk about, you also need to appraise your health. What am I eating that I need to stop eating? You know, what was I not eating that I need to start eating? And all that and all that. Then you also need to appraise your purpose and assignment. The assignment that God has committed into your hands. How far have you gone with that assignment? You also need to appraise your finances, your money, 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 money. How much did you make last year? 
How much, how much did you, you know, you know, you know it's, it's interesting that, uh, you know, uh, um, money is a big issue. If you are working, you know, how much were you able to save? How much were you able to do? And all that. These are some of the things you need to appraise. In this, in this fasting and prayer, see, see, look, look here. This fasting and prayer is not, it's not only on spiritual things. You need to appraise everything about your life. Your spending, your expenses. Is your salary all going to food? Food. 90, 95% of your allowance goes into food. You know, you need to appraise that this year. And you also need to appraise your relationship. There are some people that you need to cut off. You cut them off with matches. You know, just cut them off because their life is not benefiting. It's not increasing. It's not, you know, furnishing. It's not encouraging you. There are people who, are, who will drag you backward. As you are trying to step out in, the, you know, in faith, they drag you backward. You take one step forward, they, they pull you back three steps you know, this year you need to appraise your life and yank them up. Remember, I use the word yank. I'm not talking about yanking is different from cutting. Yanking is violent cutting. There are some people you need to cut off your life from your life so that you can move forward. So as you appraise your life, there are some friends that we need to go. They don't know. We went to primary school together. We went to kindy, kindy together. And so... And so, you went to kindy. Kindy, well, we went to uh, Maris, Maris old boys. And so, must you, keep on, must you continue being old boys? Huh? Your association with them. See, see, somebody said there are two things that can change your life. One, the kind of books you read. Number two, the kind of relationships you have. Two things that can change your life forever. The kinds of books you read. The types of books you read. Number two, the relationships, the associations you keep. Your association will either make you or break you. Especially here. You know in Fiji we have a lot of friends. It's, 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 we are very close, closely. This, especially this old boy's thing is so close. You know, I have seen, is in Fiji, I have seen people who have been friends for 30 years, 50 years, 40 years. You know, we have been friends. We, we started being friends from kindy. You know, we did friends from kindy. And uh, now you are grandparents, you are friends and all that. Very fun and good. But you need to evaluate those kind of relationships, your relationships. If the relationship is not adding to you positively, yank them off. Receive grace in Jesus' mighty name. I said in Jesus' mighty name. Yeah. All right, yes. So, so the finance, okay. The, the next one is you need to build plans and strategy for next year. I'm not talking about resolution, remember? It's not resolution. It's not a resolution you build, you make first day. I, 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 have, I had an uncle, late now, I had an uncle. He goes to church once every year. That is January 1st, that New Year service. He goes to the church. And he will come and make a very long list of resolution. I won't drink again. I will do this. I will do bad stuff. He will just come and recount all those resolutions. And uh, he will write them out and set fire on them. I tell you, the moment he set fire on the resolution, that is how the resolutions are burnt away. Because immediately the next day, you see him in the, in the same beer parlor. So uh, uh, resolutions, I'm not talking about resolution that people make and break the next moment. I'm talking about building plans, strategies on how to fulfill your goals this year. The ability to finish well is dependent on proper planning. So as we pray these 21 days, as we fast these 21 days, it's a time to receive divine plans. It's a, plan, it's a time to re receive divine strategies on how to move forward. Re receive the grace in the name of Jesus. The last one is the doing grace. No matter what you have done, no matter the plans you have put in place, if there is no doing grace upon your life, your, your planning will amount to nothing. A lot of people, I have seen beautiful plans. I have seen people take delivery of good strategies without the doing grace. There has to be a doing grace upon you as a child of God to be able to carry out those plans that you have. And may God help us in the name of Jesus Christ. 
I say, may God help us in the name of Jesus. The last one, the last one, the last one, number five. Number five, take responsibility towards investing in kingdom advancement. This year, as a church, we will need to take responsibility in advancing this kingdom of God. And how do we do that? Number one, we do that by preaching. By preaching. Wherever you are, preach the word. In your office, preach the word. In your school, preach the word. On the streets, preach the word. Show to people that you are a child of God. Prove to your friends and your colleagues that you are a son and a daughter of the Most High. Show to your mates that you are a child of the kingdom. By your actions and by your preaching. Show love to people. Don't be in places and they are gossiping about someone and you are there. You are the act, you are the chief gossip of that group. Let your love radiate so that people can see your life and they want to serve your God. Let people see the change in you so that they can follow you to your God. Preach the word. And there are different methods of preaching. You can preach by your life. You can preach by speaking. You can preach by your giving. You can preach just by helping people out. Preach the word. We want to see this place populated. We want to see, we want to see us move to second service. We want to force the church out of this place. Amen. We want to bring in people in multitude so that if this, if the management can give us two, uh, you know, you know, a, a slot to have two services or three services, then we'll be forced to go rent a place, a better place out there. Preach the word and bring men and women to the kingdom. Preach, give like never before. Give out of your resources. Give your time. Give your time. Attend services. Be around when services are on. Don't only come on Sundays. Don't be a Sunday, Sunday Christian only. Come on Wednesday when there is a program. Come during Connect services. Come when there is a youth meeting. Come when there is choir rehearsal. All right. Come. Be in attendance. Be in attendance. And also in your love. Love. Practice, show, show love. Love is, not, love is not something you just profess by your mouth. It has to show by your action. Husband, love your wife. Wife, love your children. Love your husband. And so on. Love everyone around you. By so doing, men and women will see that you are a child of the kingdom. And the kingdom of God will be enhanced. Let's be on our feet and pray. I want you to talk to God this morning. I don't know what you have heard. You may, you may have heard the logos of his word, of the word, the logos of the word. I want you to now begin to press in, in, you know, into the realm of the spirit and begin to pray so that God will begin to deliver this logos that you have heard into rhema, you know, into to quicken. God will begin to quicken it in your heart. God will begin to speak to you in specific in specificity in, in specific ways of what to do and how to appropriate this word that you have heard this morning. I want you to open your mouth, everybody. Open your mouth and begin to talk to God. Say, Lord, help me. Lord, I receive grace this morning. Lord, I receive grace this morning. I receive grace this morning. I receive grace this morning. Grace this morning to spend time in your word. Open your mouth and pray, everybody. Let the heavens hear your voice. 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 Hey, young men, young uh, women, open your mouth and pray. Let the heavens register your voice this morning. Let the heavens register your voice this morning. Open your mouth and pray. Say, Lord, I receive grace to study. I receive grace to brood upon your word. I receive grace, O oh God, to tap into the realm of rev the revelational knowledge of your word. As I study, O oh God, let the grace, O oh God, to pray come upon me. 
in the name of Jesus that I will become a carrier of your presence in the place of prayer that my house shall be turned to a house of prayer in the name of Jesus I receive that grace open your mouth and pray young boys young girls pray open your mouth and pray say Lord I receive grace this morning I receive grace this morning. I receive grace this morning. I receive grace this morning. Grace, grace this morning. 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 the one 